Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, episode 104. It's the only new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the YMCA. So, uh, it's, you know, another week, a lot more new music, and some weeks the albums jump out at me, and I know exactly what I want to review. Um, other times I have to search around a lot. So I was going through and I was this close to doing a whole thing about the genre of soul and comparing a new soul kind of guy versus an old soul kind of guy, but I just didn't have the energy for a whole genre study thing. So I kept on scrolling and I just happened to click on this one band called the Pre or Priests. There's no the. Uh, it seems that uh, definite, uh, definite articles are out with band names these days. Um, priests. And I was looking through their song titles, and they had a song called YouTube Sartre. So, you got me. I find that really interesting. I thought that was an amazing premise for a song. I didn't know what it meant. So, I decided to review the album. Does the song YouTube Sartre live up to the promise of its title? Wait and find out. In general, I would say this is a really... Okay, so, you know, I, I looked up the information about this band just a little bit. You know, I do about five minutes of research. And it kept on referring to them as post-punk. And that's one of these great catch-all terms, which means basically nothing. As far as I can tell, it just means guitar music that is not trying to be pop and not trying to be classic rock. So in that way, it completely succeeds as post-punk music. Uh, it has a female singer. Um, if you had to sort of fit her into sort of a realm of singer, I would put her maybe a little bit more like the Raincoats or the Pretenders, you know, that kind of, um, not like intentionally aggressive, but not, not soft either. Like just kind of a, a slightly edgy standard voice, but a good voice with a fair amount of range that isn't really used that much. The first track, okay, so as I'll get into, the first two tracks are amazing, the last two tracks are regrettable, and everything in the middle is in the middle. So let's talk a little bit about some of the great stuff, like the song, the, the, the opening track, Jesus' Son. So she sings about dreaming about being Jesus' son. And I'll play it just a little bit so you get a concept of what their soundscape is, because this is very typical. You know, like, nice solid drums, nothing too fancy, solid bass, nothing too fancy, solid guitar, nothing too fancy, but the ensemble is highly enjoyable post-punk, I suppose. <laughs> If you hear that, and you like that, and you want to hear more of that, the album's fairly consistent. It's a lot like that. I'll keep playing a little bit. Also, the guitar is very slidey. The guitarist likes to do a lot of the sort of slide up and down sounds, like the next couple tracks do that. So the next track is Seduction of Kansas, and Jesus' Son and Seduction of Kansas, actually all the lyrics on this album, um, I like them because it, it's clear that she has a point. She's trying to make some kind of statement. Most of it seems to be reflective on the nature of America. Some of it appears to be about like Trump's America, um, but it's never, except at the end, it's never like over, you know, over your head. It's fairly subtle. It's an interesting mixture of sort of clear and obscure. And I'd put that into the music as well and the singing. Like there's times where everything feels very clear and you can delineate every word, every note. And there's other times where it feels intentionally kind of muddled. And so when you listen to a song like The Seduction of Kansas, it's very much that. I mean, it appears to be about Kansas and the emptiness of American culture. Uh, sorry, my nose really itches, but I don't edit the show. So you just had to watch me itch my nose. I'm Big Ol' Rick. Um, you know, it seems to be about the emptiness of Middle America. They actually directly reference White Castle and Applebee's and the Koch brothers. <laughs> Just a little like, all right, turn off NPR. Um, but then, you know, there's a really nice line about Sunday, Sunday dress mothers. Like, that's the way that she refers to people who live in Kansas. And that's a nice image. And I think it's, it's sort of clear what she's saying, but not entirely. 
And that's a lot of what this is. The whole This whole song, Seduction of Candace, is a really nice track. I'll play just a second of it so you get an idea of the, what it sounds like. I'll skip ahead to the middle. A little bit more of a kind of disco drumming vibe. And that guitar, he just loves going, wee, you know. So that's uh, another really nice song of theirs. Um, and then we get to the song YouTube Sartre. And, and I, I brought my copy of, of Naja by Sartre uh, there. The rest of my Sartre books are in my office. I am really a French professor, although I haven't really studied Sartre that much. I mean, a little bit. But anyways, I, I was disappointed. But listen, this is why. If you call a song YouTube Sartre and you give it to a French professor who does nothing but listen to new music all the time, I'm going to get my head filled with ideas about what it's going to be about. Because I watch hours of YouTube. So I thought it was going to be this crystal clear masterpiece about the, the ambiguity of capitalism and communism on YouTube or maybe existentialism and philosophy on YouTube. Like a statement about YouTube. It's not that. Or at least if it is that, I couldn't pick it up on the first listen, right? Maybe it is. And if you're a Priests fan, <clears throat> let me know if I missed the genius of this song. But it just appears to be sort of talking about people who present themselves as virtuous online. Which is a worthy, worthy target. But not what I was hoping for. Uh, the rest of the album is, is fairly, I wouldn't say samey, but kind of. They have like nice little breaks, like a song called I'm Clean, which is a lot more sparse and minimalist. You can hear this. bass and kind of a drum machine sounding drum. The whole song is about like... You know. Actually, I really like this song. This song is going to get a stamp. I'm clean. This might be my favorite song on the album now that I hear it again. Because she has this nice way of echoing her own voice, but the voices are flat. And it has that really sparse drum sound with really nice bass. I'll play a little bit more. And again, what she's singing about appears to be about cleanliness and maybe drugs or sex or the general theme of purity. It's not quite clear, but it gives this atmosphere. It, it sort of makes, inter it makes emotional sense, but doesn't make rational sense. Uh, in a similar way, the next song, 68 Screen, appears to be about like how Hollywood turns women into muses, you know, like sources of inspiration but actually devoids, the, you know, takes away any of their agency. Uh, I'm going to be teaching a class on uh, French female filmmakers and, uh, and feminist theory next semester. So I might bring up this song. I might just play it for them and say, hey, here's something on a similar theme. Um, a song called Good Time Charles is like this maybe anti-porn or anti-exploitation song. One of the stronger punky songs. Like if you want to hear more kind of the punk sound, a little bit less of the... the the minimalist sound, I think uh, this is a good example of that. Uh, again, I'm not quite clear what they're saying, but they appear to be saying something. Another song about Mal Malaise, Carol. I think you could put together um, Seduction of Kansas and Carol and have an interesting meditation on the nature of mall culture in America and consumerism and misery. I once wrote a paper about Racine, and it was about uh, father figures in Racine, and uh, they don't do too well. And I sort of wrote this whole thing about absent fathers in Racine, and I gave it to my, my thesis advisor, Ronald Tobin, one of my great heroes, one of the smartest people I've ever met. And uh, he gave me an A on the paper, which is not easy to get because he was a very exigent professor, you know? But he just circled my entire conclusion and said, Je vous ferai le grand service d'écarter votre conclusion. I will do the great service for you of eliminating your conclusion. You see, he thought that I was, I was like sort of extending things out and proposing that maybe it was Racine's Jansenist sort of belief and predestination that made fathers the way they were. And it totally messed up my paper. It made my paper kind of cheesy. And he just circled it and crossed it out. I was heartbroken, but I learned something from that. Why do I tell you this story? I am going to do the grand service 
to priests to cross out the last two songs on this album. Just stop listening to it. The second last one is this interlude thing where she talks about dreaming a dream and leaving an artistic legacy. And it sounds like a, like a spoken word project for an art school. It's just like all the subtlety and ambiguity that's in the album that I enjoy is taken away. And then the last song is kind of a preachy song about Texas and it feels like maybe it's about the border. I don't know what. So, priest, je vous ferai le grand service d'écarter les deux dernières chansons. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just gone. Listen to the rest of the album. It's a, it is a, a really nice uh, ten-track album. That's what I would say. Uh, to give it a, a three-word review, I would say the best parts of it are sort of clear and obscure. What the hell? I'll call it post-punk because that's what it is. If post-punk is just the kind of the do-it-yourself aesthetic and kind of a looseness and then the, the post part means it's more exploratory, uh, it's less noisy, that's what this is. I just want to point out one thing. I had not seen my copy of Nausea by Sartre in a long time. If you've never read it, it's amazing. It's about this guy who lives his life and he just starts getting nauseous all the time. And it's because the sense of existence, uh, the weight of existence, the consciousness that he exists and will one day not exist gets, gets in his head. And somehow I must have found this magic card that my son was playing with and I put it right on the cover of this Sartre book. And it's one of the funniest things I've ever done, but I totally forgot doing it until this video. So here's my cover of Sartre's Nausea. You see, you see that, that magic card? It says, Revoke Existence. <laughs> anyway. All right. Until next time. Oh, next time's going to be exciting. I'm going to be going to a Star Wars convention. If you don't know this about me, I'm actually a big Star Wars collector and I have a podcast about Star Wars toys. And there, I'm going to record five, the five best songs affiliated with Star Wars fandom. Okay, just like, not the best five songs from Star Wars, but just Star Wars adjacent songs, Star Wars inspired songs. And I'll record it actually there in Chicago at the convention, like in the hall. It'll be cool. I think it'll be cool. It might be cool. It's going to suck. All right. Until then, new music is the fountain of emotional youth, spiritual youth, mental youth. And there is the camera. <laughs>